USC quarterback Sam Darnold is the favorite to win the Heisman going into the season. Stanford head coach David Shaw said Darnold is the best quarterback in the nation and even compared him to Andrew Luck, who he coached at Stanford in 2011. Shaw said of Darnold, he's the best college quarterback I've seen at anticipating since Andrew Luck. When you evaluate quarterbacks who can play at the next level, you're looking for guys who can see a play before it happens and get the ball out of their hands quick. He's the best I've seen in years. We're joined by Fox Sports College football analyst Joel Clyde. Welcome back, Joel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do you like the comparison of Darnold to Luck? I think it was it was very um, interesting the way that David Shaw worded his comment because I thought it was very specific to a certain trait that Darnold shared with Andrew Luck. Now, what tends to happen in this day and age in the, in the you know, 24-7 media cycle is that his entire game and the, his entire prospect of an NFL career gets then compared to Andrew Luck. I don't think that's what David Shaw was trying to do. He was trying to compare the very specific trait of being an anticipatory thrower. Yep. And, and that is a rare thing. I would think it's, from a quarterback perspective, guys, that's the most rare commodity that, that college quarterbacks have is the ability to anticipate windows and anticipate throws. Or lack. Or lack thereof. You're exactly right. It's the rarest of commodities. So from that perspective, yes, he's very similar to Andrew Luck. He has the ability to anticipate windows, put the ball down the field into small and tight spaces, very accurate down the field. There's a few other things that I think are very similar also to Andrew Luck. He's got great poise. Last year, if, if you all remember, Gus and I went up to Washington and we did the USC at Washington game. Washington was undefeated. US, uh, USC was, I think, had won five in a row, six and three, ranked number 20 in the country, right around there. And in the very first series of the game for Darnold, he goes down the field and throws a pick. And you can think, now, there's 80,000. Washington's undefeated. It got really loud, and that's a spot where young quarterbacks can fold up shop. Right. And he came back, and during the course of the rest of the half, he was 9 of 13 for 154 yards and a touchdown, and USC went into the locker room with a 17-6 lead. That, to me, shows poise, and that's a similarity with Andrew Luck. He can control the game from the pocket. He's got great arm talent, which is the ability to deliver the ball on target and on time from any platform, and he can do that anywhere on the football field, and then that anticipation that David Shaw was talking about. So from those perspectives, yes, he's similar, but I'd love – for people to just relax and just let him be a great college quarterback for now. I think a lot of things also, they both played in the pro style offense. Yeah. So it's so hard to evaluate quarterback skill because everybody plays in a spread set and the wide receivers are out. And that's what they like anticipation because the guys are so open. You just throw the ball where and the windows in NFL are like this. And it's almost like throw, trying to throw a basketball through a keyhole mm -hmm. because you're not going to have a five-yard guy wide open. Not rarely, not very often. I think that's the biggest similarities that I see. They're both big guys. Sam Darnold's only played 10 games. Yeah. So I kind of want to see a little bit more of him. But I think the pro-style offense in which they played in, both played in the Pac-12, I think those are some of the similarities. I agree with you. We're asking an awful lot. Andrew Lug was the number one pick in the draft. He's the face of the franchise. Let's see once the expectations, because he didn't have these expectations last year. Right. No. Now he comes in as the Heisman favorite. Now, Rose Bowl, yeah, you won that. And the last time we saw him, 453, five touchdowns, that was good. They're thinking national championship at USC. Mm -hmm. So now with the expectations start to rise, let's see how Sam Darnold handles this anticipation. But he does. He, I mean, you, you look at the way they hold the football. He has pro. Now, I'm not used to seeing quarterback with mouthpieces, but hey, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new day. No, Skip. new age. Yeah. No, no mouthpiece. You got to be able to talk at a moment. Mm. That's because no one huddles up anymore. They don't have a cadence. They're just up there clapping at the line of scrimmage. So the one irony to David Shaw's statement is that last year, when USC played at Stanford and lost 27 to 10. Uh, Sam Darnold didn't start and didn't play much until garbage time at the end of the game. He yep. got one last drive, and he threw a pick in that drive. So it's not like David saw him up close and personally. He's right. just going to have to go off tape or television. Right. Maybe he just saw him in the Rose Bowl on TV. I don't know. So here's my quick take on Sam Darnold that I watched, I don't know, four or five times on television last year. I think he could be a little better than Andrew Luck, and I'm, I'm heaping expectations on those young shoulder pads but from what I saw 
he has a little better feel for the game than I saw Luck have at Stanford. Luck had some problems, and he's been a turnover machine, as we've talked about again and again in the NFL. He holds the ball too long. He will force throws into coverage because he's, he, he's one of those guys who's going to will it. He's just going to will it to happen, and at the next level, you can't will it consistently. So he's thrown way too many picks, too many turnovers, and too little feel for winning games that you need to win because they've had a hard time with him even when he's been healthy, but he's gotten beaten up a lot. Yes. This kid has a knack, a poise that you talk about. Nothing seems to bother him. The interviews throw me off. Have you have you sat with him? I can't remember. I have sat with yeah. him, yeah. And, and he, he, he's a Southern California kid, but he doesn't come across as like surfer boy cool or particularly commanding presence, right? Is that fair to say? Um, his I, I presence don't... with media is very different than his presence with teammates. Uh -huh. And and quite frankly, I don't really care what your presence is with media. Now, I know an NFL franchise might. Your ability to make your teammates better and your team better, I think, is the best attribute that a quarterback can have, and he certainly has that, and I've seen that interaction when he's with his teammates, not, okay. not necessarily with the media. In, in interviews that I see, just TV, he comes across like a philosophy major who's sipping latte talking about Camus or Descartes. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I'm like, what? Seriously, I don't know how he was when he sat eye to eye with you, but then I see his body language on the field. He is into it. In the Rose Bowl, he was into it. Yeah. And he was leading with body language with like, we're going to get this ball in the end zone. The, the, I think the, the greatest attribute that a quarterback can have is to get the other guy to want to go to yep, battle with him. I agree. Mm -hmm. To convince you, convince them that there's no other player that they would rather have right then, right there okay. than you. So he didn't start until, what was it, the third? He started the what, fourth, fourth game. game. Fourth game he started. They won nine straight games with him. Can you, imagine what would happen? Can you imagine what would happen to him if they had tried him out there against St. Nick? Can you imagine? It had broken him. We wouldn't be talking about him now, Skip. He, this man destroyed dreams. It, it would have been different. Wait a minute. Darnold might have put up 50. Okay. 50. Well, Deshaun put <laughs> up 50. It, it, it definitely would have been different. Right? Rather than saying better at this point than luck, I think it's it's it would be better for us if we would just allow him to be different because again there are two very different players at this point in their career luck handled more schematically in the organization of the offense at the line of scrimmage at Stanford Stanford ran and still runs one of the most intricate schemes in college football and that's a David Shaw staple pro and style off pro style I mean the quarterbacks handling protect protection checks they're they've got the most intricate run to run checking game mm -hmm. in college football Darnold doesn't necessarily handle that type of gymnastics from a schematic standpoint but what Darnold does do better than luck is his ability to improvise when the structure of the offense yep. breaks down he can still be at his best he's a bit more of a gunslinger he is see I see luck in him I also see a little Elway in him mm. as well. You know, the ability to get outside and all of a sudden he hurts you with his feet. He throws the ball down the field with that strong arm. But again, I hate those types of comparisons because I just want Sam Darnold to be the best Sam Darnold he can be at USC. And that's all we should be asking of him. I just like to see guys, quarterbacks in the pro style offense, not looking to cards. Somebody got a giraffe, the other got a golf ball, <laughs> right. and the guy driving a truck. Right. I mean, what, what, what the heck is that? Because now when you get to the NFL, Skip, you're like, well, he's never taken a ball from the center. Well, he's never had to call plays. He's never had to read the – so what, what, why the hell did I take him? The coach is the star of the <laughs> offense. That's yeah. what happens too often, to yeah. a fault, because they, they want to have complete control of the offense. But this kid, to your point, can break plays, and yet Gunslinger completed – 67% yeah, of his yeah. passes. That's that's pretty great. Yeah, that's that's so unbelievable. I Mel Kuyper has him number one on his bar. I think Todd McShay also. I mean, I get it. What, what, what about the quarterback from Wyoming? You like him? Josh Allen is is a Carson Wentz style of player. He's big, mm -hmm. he's rugged, great arms, not gonna hurt you outside of the pocket necessarily. The one knock on Josh Allen from Wyoming is he is a little turnover prone. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's gonna have to come down for him this year in order to stay in that number one sweepstakes that we see a rose or a Darnold in right now. Skill set wise, I think Rosen's the most talented, but if you're just drafting a guy to come in, be a football playing Jesse, and lead your organization to a Super Bowl, you'd have to take Darnold at this point. Carson Wentz. So, future Hall of Famer, then, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Carson Wentz? Yeah.
Well, that's what Carson Wentz says, right? Mm. No, that's what uh, P, uh, his head coach said. Well, Doug he's Peterson. a combination of he, Brett Favre and Peyton, Peyton Manning. Manning. Peyton Manning. <laughs> and a little Jim Kelly. He ran with a little Jim oh, Kelly, oh, too. Oh, wait, I'm still yeah. waiting for a quarterback in the draft to be like, what's your comparison? And be like, I got a lot of Brock Osweiler in me. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. No, they, they're, they're like, going to say that, right? No, it's so always I, Brady and Manning. No. Always Brady and Manning. <laughs> always. And be sure to check out Joe Klatt's top five.